My friend, the working environment has changed drastically. As a result of the pandemic, people have been working from home, they've changed jobs, and I feel like people are really only going to work if they find satisfaction and fulfillment from their work. So how do we get this at our current workplace? Like without chopping and changing things, without trying to find something new, how do we get this satisfaction and this fulfillment from our current job? And in this video, I wanna share with you a few research-based ways that you can do this, as well as my own personal thoughts about how I do this in my life and the jobs that I work. And in doing so, you find enjoyment and satisfaction in the job that you have. Let's go. All right, one of the first ways that you can do this is you can get more involved. Now, I know you might be thinking, why on earth would I wanna do more work? I do enough already. And like, fair enough, you might be doing heaps of stuff, but like, you know, that's a conversation for a little bit later on. But what I mean by this is, is I want you to involve yourself with activities that kind of suit your particular set of skills or whatever that may be, or it's an area in the company or whatever it is that you're doing that you find that you have a bit of an interest in. And when you do this, you can actually develop a lot more skills and you can feel like you're growing. And along that journey of growth, you can also feel like you're also being acknowledged for the work that you're doing. Two, know your impact. Sometimes it's hard to know whether you're getting good results. And in my work, I get to go out into schools and I get to deliver different types of workshops. And sometimes I very often get to see the type of impact that I'm making. But there's a lot of people behind the curtain that are working all the back end sort of stuff and all the processes that allow us to go out into schools and do the work. And they don't get to necessarily see the tangible results. And my only thoughts on that is, is that like, it can get very demotivating when we don't see the impact that we're making. So I think a really good way of navigating this would be to ask, hey, like, how are we doing? Like what's the type of impact and like what are the stories that we hear from all the impact that we're making in all these different schools so that I know that I'm directly related to all of that. And when I feel like I'm directly related to all of that, I'm making a connection between the work that I'm doing, the work that you're doing and the impact that we're making. And when that happens, then it's like, you know what? I'm actually doing really meaningful work here. And then that way we can enjoy our jobs a lot more. Now, whatever, like however that looks like for you and your type of work, um, like find out how, like find out how you can start making that impact even bigger if possible, if you feel like, you know what, there's actually not much of an impact that I'm making. It might even just be like, you know what, asking a colleague next to you, hey, do you need a bit of help with something? Or like, hey, like how can I, how can I make your day a little bit easier? And then that way, you may not necessarily be making a massive impact um, company-wise, we might be making an impact on someone's life, right? Like, like just a friend, just the colleagues. And like, I think that even, even that is enough to kind of feel that job satisfaction, um, to make you feel like, you know what, you're actually doing a little bit of meaningful work too. Number three, expand your skills. Increase your repertoire of skills, my friend. Like you are amazing. Make yourself even more amazing. Learn to code, learn how to design, learn how to like communicate with people a lot more effectively, whatever it is. Learn to do something. When you develop more skills, you not only become more useful to the company, but you also get more useful to you. And when this happens, you feel like you're a lot more confident. You feel like you can just do a lot more things. I feel like a lot of reason why people have a low job satisfaction is because there might be an element of lack of confidence because lack of confidence would be directly linked to how we feel about ourselves and then therefore how we feel about the work that we do as well. And when we develop more skills, it can also mean that, you know, we get a promotion within the company. We get, you know, perhaps maybe a different title, maybe we get a pay raise, like whatever it is, right? If we develop, if we make ourselves, our person, our skill set, like better than like, I'm, I'm not even, like, I cannot even tell you, I can't even express how important this is because it just means like, oh, in my experience, like the world just threw me so many more opportunities when I started upgrading all my skill sets. Like I've recognized that I'm quite blessed to be in a country like Australia where I have access to so many resources and, um, you know, chances to like upskill. And like, I'm really like blessed to have been offered a lot of positions and a lot of opportunity where um, like I get a pay raise or like, you know, I, I get offered more responsibility, which means a lot more people look up to me. And like, although it can be a lot more, like it feels like it's a lot more pressure. It also makes me feel like, you know, the work that I'm doing, I'm actually getting recognized for it. So pick up a new skill, my friend, like there's so much benefit to it. And if you want to get smart about it, like find an area in the company where you know, like that, that company that you're working for is lacking in this or like the company that you want to get involved in like it's lacking in this area and when you do that and you develop, develop a skill set that's like specific to that like whoa your value just like oof, it just multiplies 
Four, get social. If you know the people that you work with outside of work, it's like, it makes everything so much better. You have a greater depth of connection with them. I don't mean that casual high when you're going for your fourth coffee at work, but I mean like actually go outside of work and meet up with them. You'll find that that depth of connection, like although it does take time with that person, it adds so much more meaning to your day. In fact, I actually remember a time this week where earlier on we had to like, we had to watch a, a, a movie for like homework um, as part of our training. And instead of like, like I could have very easily just sat at home and just watched it by myself. Um, but instead, what I did was, was like, we, like, well, one of our, one of our friends kind of like, a friend who also happened to be a colleague, like organized a night at his place where we would watch it together. And like, it was so much more fun and so much more interesting doing it that way because it meant that, yes, like, you know what, we, we were watching this movie that we had to, but it was just so much more um, pleasant and so much more experiential when we were watching it together. So connect with your colleagues and everything like outside of work. I'm quite a social person. So I feel like every single workplace that I go to and every single news that I start, I always develop like relationships. And it also means that um, like even when I leave a company, um, it means that I've still got co I've still got connections in those companies that I can always refer back to later, where I might I might get them in the podcast on the future, or you know I might end up catching up with them for coffee, or they might introduce me to someone that creates a new opportunity. So there's like there's so many benefits to connecting with people and like not allowing them just to be colleagues. Of course, there's like a few people that you need to like extremely like especially have boundaries with because sometimes those, those lines can get blurred. But where you can try and be try and be social with them. Like they can recognize you as a colleague, but then also someone that's like, it's like a really good connection for them in whatever kind of form and fashion that you feel would be that, that you're comfortable with. Five, renovate your workspace. Surround your desk with things that you love or like things that just make you feel really, really good and really, really inspired. When your space has a little bit of you in it in whatever like form or fashion that is, it gives you a reason to be happy and joyful at work. Create your space. Like one day I'll make a video on like my actual, my whole desk setup and like how I've done it and all that. So if you wanna be there for that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Anyway, moving on to the next thing, number six, maintain balance. I know this might be difficult, but your work cannot be your life. I fall into this trap of making my work my life and what that meant for me was was that my family, my social, my health, and all these other different facets of my life, that all got that, that all got blurred. It is my honest opinion that a clear division should be made. And I know it's hard, and a lot of us are working from home, and the lines can very easily get blurred at home. But lines need to be drawn. Devices need to be switched off so you can divert your attention to areas of your life that need it. As we navigate life, different areas and times in our life will require and demand of us different time, different energy requirements. It, it, it'll demand certain things. Some areas are gonna require a lot more attention than others. And so a really good level of self-awareness around this is like would be quite beneficial. Here's a few questions that you can use that can help you get a bit of clarity around this. What are my current top priorities in order? Are there any areas of my life that I'm currently neglecting that I should be giving more attention to? If I was looking at my life from an outside perspective, what should my top priorities be? Number seven, take stock and evaluate. Spending time reflecting on where you are right now and then where you want to be is a really important thing to do because when you have some clarity around this, it allows you to put the days into perspective. It means that time's not just passing on by. It means that, for example, if you're working at a company for five years, it's not that you've repeated the same year five times where you just haven't grown, but it's that you've grown five years. Right? Like every single year you've made changes, you've grown on your journey to whatever goal it is that you're achieving. You're achieving. I think I remember a quote once that, um, that said something along the lines of like, do you have 10 years of experience or have you just repeated the same year 10 times? And like, I think that's a really good way of like putting this. And plus having a goal of where you wanna end up in the future can help you feel excited and motivated to actually do the work because you know along the way that you're gonna take processes, you're gonna make steps day by day so you're gonna get closer to achieving that. Number eight, duty over desire. This is a hard one. And I'm still coming to terms with this because I still don't fully like, I still don't fully like grasp it and like implement it in my life. But I think it was something just to share with you anyway, because what this means is like, we put our duty, like what we need to be doing over what our preferences are. Like, like we just have no choice. And like the best analogy that I can think of is like when we're in high school and we are doing topics, we're studying topics, we're doing subjects that we don't necessarily enjoy but we have no choice but to do it because where it's gonna end up at the end, like that's where we wanna be, but we have to do it anyway. Like it's it's about doing the duty. It's about doing the work over like our likes and our dislikes. It's about doing what needs to be done. 
when you're doing the work, that's when you can find satisfaction, fulfillment, happiness, and whatever it is that you're doing. Lose yourself in it. There's a saying that goes, do what you love and you'll love what you do. And like, you know, fair enough, you know, you, you find a passion and like you chase your passion and then you like you find it, you find a passion that you can make a career out of. And like, you know, I'm, I'm thankfully like lucky, like one of the lucky few that have managed to do that to some extent, but not a lot of people get that chance. And like, I've been reflecting on this for like some time now. And like, even in the work that I do, like there's a lot of things that I really don't like, like I really get frustrated at. Um, and instead of looking at it from the lens of, you know, do what you love and then love what you do. Um, why don't you just love what you do first? Like no matter what it is that you do, you know, all the roles that you play as a, you know, as a parent, as a son, as a daughter, as a, you know, whatever it is like that you are, whatever you choose to identify and whatever role you play in your life, like, you know, you play those roles to the best of your ability and like you love what you're doing. And then perhaps, you know, you'll end up doing what you love. And like your last number nine, the write-off principle for recharging. YouTube, doctor, podcast, newsletter writer, I'm pretty, this guy does like way too many things. He's awesome, Ali Abdal. He has this really awesome thing that he once shared in an article. He calls it the write-off principle. I'll link the article in the description, but essentially the write-off principle is where you essentially write off some time for yourself. I feel like this is especially useful for people who do not know how to like stop working like myself. And the purpose behind this is to give our minds and bodies a break, a chance to switch off. So when we do need to switch on later on, we can come back full steam ahead. An analogy I like to use with this is, is like we'll work out X amount of days a week, but we always make sure that there's one or two rest days a week. And the reason why we do that is because our minds and our bodies need that day off, need that chance to just rest. Because if it doesn't rest, then it can't come back stronger later on. If you're someone that's really, really attached to like work and doing things, that like as awesome as that may be, you can almost look at this as like, you know what? Um, it's like the write-off principle for productivity. I think that's the way Ali puts it. Um, it's like a chance for you to give yourself a rest so you can be better for your work and the people in your life later on. By the way, if you want to have a look at the different types of rest that we need in a day, then have a look at this video up here. Otherwise, I hope this video will help you gain a lot more satisfaction and fulfillment out of the job that you currently already have. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye.